Okay, question number seven from October 2023, P3 paper. So basically, in question number seven, uh, it's a question from differentiation, that is calculus part of P3. Let's see. In seven, question number seven, there is a figure given, and they said figure one shows a sketch of the curve C. Okay, the sketch of the curve C with equation y equals to f of x where f of x equals to the equation is given that's fine e inverse x squared times 2x squared minus 3 whole squared okay now they asked to find the range of f the first part they asked for finding the range of f we need to find out the range of f so you can see that if you if you see the the graph the sketch you can see that the graph is above the x-axis and they asked for the range range means the y values so since the the graph is above the x-axis that means the values of y would definitely be greater than what zero above the x-axis and it will be below this y value because the graph you can see it is not getting above above that it's not getting above that so if you just find out the y coordinate of the point of intersection with the y axis of the curve f of x we will get the range so let's find out the y intercept so for part a we will put x equals to 0 if you put x equals to 0 we will get y equals to what y equals to e to the power 0 this is 1 and 2 times 0 this is 0 so negative 3 whole square this is nothing but 9 so that means range of f of x is what f of x it is greater than or equal 0 it is greater than or equal because you can see it is intersecting the x axis there so it will be greater than or equal 0 less than or equal 9 that's it for part b what they have asked for part b show that f dash x the derivative it is this one we need to show that okay the derivative so at first let's see f, f of x if you see the equation of f of x you can see that there are two terms algebraic terms being in product form in the multiplication form that means you need to use the product rule in order to differentiate this equation so for product rule what we do we take u as one term and v as the other so u would be e inverse x squared in this case and v would be 2x squared negative 3 2x squared negative 3 whole squared okay now we need to differentiate du over dx you will get what negative twice of x e to the power minus x squared how is this this is differentiating using chain rule how consider e to the power negative x squared now we know that e to the power something is just as it is this is a property of exponential curves that their rate of change is itself so that's why we put e inverse x squared and then since it is composite the composite part is the power of the e so we differentiated the power of the e we got negative 2x and multiplied it with the coefficient 1 we got negative 2x e to the power negative x squared then differentiate dv over dx so what you will get same uh, chain rule so one will get deducted from the power and then we will differentiate the part within the bracket so we will get 4 x so we need f dash x so f dash x would be u times dv over dx just cross multiply and then add cross multiply and just add so we will get 4 x e inverse x squared 2x squared negative 3 this is u times dv over dx 
and then plus v into du over dx. So, 2 x e inverse x squared times what? 2 x squared negative 3 whole squared. So, what we can do? We can take common. What we can take common here? We can take uh, 2 x we can take 2 x e to the power negative x squared 2 x e to the power negative x squared then what can be taken common 2 x squared negative 3 can be taken common and then what remains from there you will have 2 from there 2 and then minus what 2 minus uh, it will be just 2 x squared plus 3 because from the second term we took this one common so since it was 2 x squared negative 3 whole squared we took 1 2 x squared negative 3 common so other one remains so this one will get multiplied by negative 1 that's how it is negative 2 x squared plus 3 so simplify this what you will get <coughs> 2x e inverse x squared you will get ok you will get 2x uh, 2x e to the power negative x squared and then 2x squared minus 3 2x squared minus 3 times what times 3 plus 2 this is 5 so that would be 5 minus 2 x squared that is it this is a derivative so 2 x times 2 x squared so let us represent it in this form so f dash x so f dash x would be what they wanted 2 x times ok 2 x times 2x squared 2x times 2x squared minus 3 then e inverse x squared e inverse x squared times what 5 minus 5 minus what we got 5 minus twice of x squared 5 minus twice of x squared that is it. So, what would be the value for a and b a is 5 a is 5 and b is what b is just 2 that is it we are done with part b <coughs> next part c in part c they are asking given that the line y equals to k y equals to k where k is a constant and k greater than 0 that is it will the k equal y equals to k the, k the value of k should be greater than 0 that means it is above the x axis intersects the curve at exactly two distinct points ok two distinct points. So, for this case you need to consider like what type of line is y equals to k is it a vertical line or a horizontal straight line definitely it is a horizontal straight line so it says that the this line intersects the curve exactly at two distinct points so in that case we will see look let's use a horizontal line let's draw at first a horizontal line there so we will draw okay it gives a different one okay we will draw a horizontal straight line on this sketch okay we got that now let's try to move it try to move it there 
just hold a bit okay so we need to draw a straight line there we got the straight line then we will try to move this it's moving now look so here if I if I put no point here no points of intersection so y equals to k this is the line for what y equals to k y equals to k so now try to move it if you move it look here you can see how many points of intersection only one only one points of intersection but now as you just go below how many points of intersection now two points of intersection that means this is acceptable so that means the value for k should be what k should be what below the y intercept we got 9 earlier that was 9 it should be below 9 and let's see the lower limit two points of intersection two points of intersection still two points but you can see at just this point how many points of intersection you are getting four points of intersection that means the value for k should be above this y coordinate so that means we need to figure out the y coordinate of these two turning points so let's work on it so at these turning points what we know the derivative dy f dash x f dash x would be equal to what 0 so if f dash x is 0 then what we can do either either uh, e inverse x squared would be 0 but e inverse x squared you can ignore this because exponential cannot be can never be 0 okay so since exponentials can never be 0 so we will just ignore this one and we will just consider the remaining ones so we will get either x equals to 0 or the another one was 2x squared negative 3 equals to 0 2x squared negative 3 equals to 0 or the remaining one is what 5 minus 2x squared equals to 0 so what you will get here either x equals to 0 this is the maximum turning point this is where the curve is intersecting the y-axis so ignore this one we need x squared equals to 3 over 2 or x squared equals to what 5 over 2 so you will get x equals to plus minus square root of 3 over 2 or x equals to plus minus square root of 5 over 2 okay now which one would be the value for x there you can see you can we got four x coordinates so why there are four coordinates this is 1 this is 2 this is 3 this is 4 so that means the x value which one is larger x value this one is larger so the larger x value would be the x value for the max for that turning point for which turning point for this turning point so we got so we got x equals to what x equals to the larger one is square root of 5 over 2 so if you put it into the equation the value of f of square root of 5 over 2 this is what use your calculator to find out the value so 5 over 2 whole squared okay 5 over 2 whole squared square root of 5 over 2 whole squared this is 5 over 2 so 5 over 2 times 5 this is 5 minus 3 2 squared is 4 4 e inverse 5 over 2 it will be e inverse square root of 5 over 2 whole square is what 5 over 2 this is the 
y value of this point okay so we got the minimum limit should be what it should be greater than 4 e inverse 5 over 2 we got the value for k now that's not the end we have still something left how if you go further you will see that the curve is again having two points of intersection where at this point and that point so that means another possible value for k is k equals to 0 so the answer for part d would be k equals to 0 and another one is what k greater than 4 e to the power negative 5 over 2 and less than what less than 9 that's the answer for part c it's part c yeah